Well, Kenny, I think we're deep enough into Jets camp here to draw a couple conclusions on this team. We're through two scrimmages. The season opener is right around the corner. So let's do five things that we've learned in Jets training camp. I'm going to let you start. Well, we're learning that Paul Maurice is willing to try some things out. We don't know how long this will last. You and I have had this debate. How long will Kyle Connor be on the second line, quote unquote, with uh, Paul Stastny and Patrick Laine? That remains to be seen. But the fact that he was willing to test drive Nikolai Ehlers on that top line, to me, shows that there is the potential for that to go longer term. We know it's been a debate in the community for a long time whether or not Nikolai Ehlers deserves more of an opportunity. Right now, we know he deserves to start the year. Will he stay there for a long period of time? That remains to be seen. But I think it's a smart move on a number of levels. For Ehlers, it's a great opportunity. And for Kyle Connor and Patrick Laine, I think there's some real potential to mesh with Paul Stastny, who is that connector in that second line center role. Well, I'm going to stick with the theme of the higher end players. And one of the things I think we've learned here is that the Jets plan to have a more two headed monster approach when it comes to their power play. They've really relied on the top power play in years past to the point that they're usually chewing up a buck 40, a buck 45 of the power play. They want to get that a little more balanced out. And it's important to remember not long ago when the Jets had one of the better power plays in the league for many stretches of that season, it was the second line power play that was carrying the power. Play. They want to get back to that. They want to spread it around. And honestly, adding names like Paul Stastny into the mix, and you've got guys like Nick Ehlers on that second line power play, those guys deserve a shot to show what they can do. They sure do. And that also provides a bit of a carrot if you're on that second unit. Maybe you can inch your way onto the first. Uh, for me, the third thing we've learned uh, is that Connor Hellebuck is maturing if that's the right word uh, we're used to him saying mark me down for 82 starts in a shortened season we would not have been surprised in the least if he had said I'd like 50 or so but the fact that he was able to tone that number down at least publicly to 40 to 45 uh, that to me represents a little bit of progress and growth I think he knows that he needs Lauren Brassois to provide some uh, competitive starts for the Jets in order for them to be a playoff team but we also know that doesn't really take away from the workhorse mentality. Uh, I think it's going to be closer to 45 than to 40. But Lauren Brassois also, to his own credit, said he'd love to play upwards of 20 games. I don't think that number he's going to hit. But it could be in that 12 to 14 range. I'm going to mark Hellebuck down for 42 starts. Okay. Uh, you talk about his growth. I mean, I noticed the first time uh, Dylan Sandberg was on the ice with the big group, did a play, and you saw Connor Hellebuck come over and kind of take him aside from the group and whisper a little something in his ear. The guy's definitely maturing into a teacher on this team. Okay, I'm going to go with the fourth thing we've learned, and let's go to the fourth line, which is a tool that the Jets have not really used that often, basically, since Paul Maurice has got here. The expectation is this year that's going to change. You take a look at some of the people they've brought in, Nate Thompson they are talking you know gloriously about him and the potential that he has to add to the defensive nature of this team Trevor Lewis came in on a PTO has been very very impressive I wouldn't be surprised to see him start the season in a Jets jersey and you take a look at players like Jensen Harkins or Mason Appleton young guys who have really caught the coach's eye and are really pushing for ice time you're going to need to run the fourth line if you're going to find space and time for players like that to play and that so far has been the plan for Paul Maurice is to get them more involved as drivers of the pace in this upcoming season. Yeah, that's going to be so essential with the compressed schedule for me. And the last thing that we've learned, Sean, is that it looks like an internal growth situation on the back end, at least to start. And we talked about uh, mixing up the forward lines. He's also, Paul Maurice has done that with his defense pairings. Uh, it looks like Josh Morrissey will be reunited with Tucker Pullman. We saw Tucker Pullman as more of a third pairing guy, especially after Dylan DeMello assigned the long-term extension. But for now, the Jets are looking at balance on the back end, a bit of a bigger guy with a skilled guy. So for me, that's good news for Nathan Beaulieu but it will require a little bit more patience for the Jets faithful who are hoping to get a bit of a longer look at Vili Hainala and Dylan Sandberg. Uh, Sandberg has been excellent in camp, but didn't really get a long look. 
with the main group, although yeah. he did get there at the end. So it looks more and more like those guys could be starting off with the Manitoba Moose. We know that Vili Hainala will probably start on the taxi squad. How soon he'll get an opportunity will be something that we will both be watching very closely after his strong showing at the World Junior Hockey Championship. Well, I'll tell you this, Kenny, there is no growth without change, and we just listed off five things that the Jets are trying to change. We will see how quickly or if at all those changes will take.